Now taking his position is Assistant Division Commander, Brigadier General James W. Blackley. special day for us today. I'm just going to make a few remarks uh, as the ADC on his behalf. First of all, uh, Lieutenant General Donovan, Ken, welcome. Great to see you back in the Follow Me Division, sir. Uh, General Worth, sir, you haven't left yet officially. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're, we're thankful you're, for you're here. General Hannigan and, and Distinguished Sergeants Major and Representatives. Exciting day for us. The Follow Me Division has an incredible and rich history. It got a whole lot better in 1981 when we had our first Command Master Chief, Master Chief Petty Officer Hume. In 1999, per the board in y'all's office, we had our first actually designated Command Master Chief. And here you have today number 16 and number 17 in this historic division. And that history got a lot better in 1981. And really not a lot better, a whole lot better. Incredible capacity and capability that is really part of our heritage. And I just want to speak briefly uh, about, one, the combat power in this room, as General Little would say, with I think most of uh, our CVs in the Navy represented here to that team. Uh, thank you for being here and representing uh, your tribe. Uh, a lot of special relationships with the Marine Corps over the years with the CVs, as many of you know. And, and uh, Master Chief Cox, you brought that to bear in this division and made us better for it. And so uh, to you and Veronica, thank you. And thank you for all you've done for this division for several years. And, uh, and Command Master Chief Merriman, welcome aboard. You're going to do great work. Uh, I'm the benefactor, uh, the benefactor in my career of several new deployments. And when you spend that much time with the Navy, you know the power of the Chief's Mess. And not all Marines, y'all know because of ships and different things, that not all Marines have that same exposure and experience with interacting with the Navy. Personal experience benefiting from the Chief Mess, you brought that to really brought that to life and made it a powerful tool in this division uh, and we're thankful for that. I had a chance last week to go to an event and couldn't be more clear that the Chief's Mess in this division is powerful and it's making Marines and Sailors better, it's making us more lethal and more ready and it really is the glue that binds this team together and so for all the Master Chiefs here, the Chief Petty Officers, uh, we thank you and this day is about this post and the transfer of those responsibilities and what the Command Master Chief in the Follow Me Division does for the Marines and Sailors of this division, and ultimately it's about lethality and readiness and naval integration. And so for number 16, we're going to send you off, and I know General Worth is going to have some comments, 
you got a big day today, but uh, Master Chief Cox, thank you. Uh, and, and on behalf of General Odom and the entire legacy of this division, thank you for your hard work. And again, Command Master Chief Merriman, welcome aboard, and uh, we're ready to get to work. And so we're going to celebrate y'all today, but I wanted to honor the post and the tradition and what it means to the Marines in this division. And then I'll, uh, and, and I'll close with just, um, uh, just gratitude for what the Chiefs Mess does. And uh, we truly, truly appreciate it. And thanks for setting a great example for us. All right? Thank you. At this time, Major General Worth is taking his position in the reviewing area, and we ask that you rise for the playing of arms. Because you are the collective human talent, manpower, you are the think tank, you are the energy, you are the families that empower those who wear the cloth and those who serve. You are the families who produce these great humans, these individuals who serve their Marines and their sailors, and of course this collective organism that is a product of our United States, a product of those who decide to serve, and those who have served well for 34 years, okay? 34 years, and I'll talk about that in a moment, and in a dynamic career that now leads you to this time and this place. This is an important moment, an important time. But before I continue, I just want to provide a round of applause for the Follow Me Band that always makes occasions like this even more special. <laughs> so again, General Lively mentioned that I'm the former Division Commanding General. And we have the former, former Division Commanding General here. Okay? General Odom is now in the chair. But that tells you that a three-year tour inside a Marine Corps formation is significant. It is special because you will outlast most of the commanding generals. We serve for a couple of years. And so having been here inside the division as the assistant division commander for General Donovan, when he came to the office and said, hey, I have a thought. I'm thinking about maybe, maybe doing something slightly different. Traditionally, because of the wealth and the large number of hospitalmen and the medical professionals that serve inside of the division, the ground combat element of the MACTAP specifically, we tend to have offered to us leadership that comes specifically from that community. But again, we serve alongside, inside the MLG specifically, and with the base and the installation, we serve alongside our CBs, our Civil Engineer Officer Corps, they are integral to what it is we do on a day-to-day -day basis. And at the time, a couple years ago, back in 2021, the Marine Corps had embarked upon its Force Design 2030 initiatives. We were contemplating how it is we would organize ourselves and execute our mission under the most austere, the most spartan, and at the essence of expeditionary operations. We were looking at littoral operations in contested environments, expeditionary advanced-based operations, distributed maritime operations. Harkening back to a time and a period that points distinctly to the birth of this division in 1940 and the birth of our CBs. Born at the same time, 
joined together during the island hopping campaign in the Pacific during World War II. Together, CVs and Marines set conditions for the successes that we all know about in the Pacific campaign. Sweated together, bled together, organized similarly. In a CB, we have an individual who comes from an organization that is organized in teams, squads, platoons, companies, boots in the dirt in austere environments, doing hard things ashore. At the same time, we're contemplating how we organize to make sure that we can carry combat power over extended distances, go into places that haven't yet been. There is no hard stand. There aren't cushy conditions and swah huts and all of those types of things. You're going to carve out your existence in that place, in that space, through hard work, through a focused team. So when General Donovan came in and said, I have a thought, and I might do something slightly different, at a time we're thinking differently about how we fight, it made perfect sense. And of course, after reviewing it, he came in and said, I have a thought, and I might do something slightly different, at a time we're thinking differently about how we fight, it made perfect sense. And of course, after reviewing the talent that is offered in all of these portfolios, I'm talking to the families, I'm trying to avoid all the jargon and the acronyms, okay? All right, if you look at the finders and we look through resumes and portfolios of excellence, Scotty Cox rose to the top. And so when General Donovan decided to choose Scotty Cox to come in and give us a slightly different look at a time that was important. He jumped in and he brought all of his experience. He has served in Naval Mobile Construction Battalions 1, 5, and 3. He's been an instructor out of Port Marnini for both the enlisted side and the Civil Engineer Officer Corps. He has served around the globe in austere places. Diego Garcia, Guam, Okinawa, Iraq, Congo, Liberia, Somalia, Garden Spots. <laughs> Negative. Right? It is indicative of what we ask our CBs to do. It doesn't matter where you go, you carve out a place and a space to conduct operations. And there's nothing more important than the operation, the mission, which is bringing combat power and lethality ashore to do the nation's bidding when the time comes. So, Scotty brings all of that experience into the Follow Me Division, into the Chief's Mess, and begins to go to work, helping us organize, being integral, being a senior enlisted advisor. Naval instruction tells us that being part of the Command Master Chief program, you serve inside of the Master Chief Petty Officer of the Navy's Mess, the collective Navy Mess, and then specifically you shape the Mess and imbue and inculcate professionalism, discipline, naval traditions, standards, expeditionary mindsets into the formation you're in. And over the last three years, a year with General Donovan, again, emerging from COVID, regaining steam with regard to operations broadly, and then specifically exporting our capabilities abroad. If not for global force management, finding opportunities to take an organization like you know, combined task group 612 forward and go out and operate and put to the test operational design and concepts, put them into effective operations in conjunction with the Navy fleet, the Sixth Fleet in that particular instance. But operationally, Scotty helped the division in ways inside of every formation. As we say inside the Navy, our naval services, down to the deck plate level. He improved our Navy orientation, our orientation program for every Navy individual who serves inside the division. Whether it be medical officers, whether it be hospital, hospital men, or religious persons serving in our religious ministry teams. The orientation program is robust, it's effective. He spends time there, the commanding general spends time with those individuals who arrive inside of the division. He has spent time inculcating a spirit of unity, discipline, sacrifice, 
and absolute technical professionalism inside of our chief's mess. During his time, we have produced an additional senior chief petty officer. We have several selectees for master chief petty officer. We have eight additional chief petty officers. <laughs> the reason I bring out those particular numbers, because again, back to 2021, bringing in someone who's going to give our chief's mess a slightly, a slightly different look. We wanted to get more of the Navy's offering as it pertained to meritorious advancement, promotions in grade on time. We wanted more because we believe that the mission inside of the Follow Me Division, the tasks that we undertake, the global requirements that we oversee, we send individuals inside of our organizations all the way to Okinawa as part of the unit deployment program. We serve in CENTCOM, we serve in AFRICOM, we serve in UCOM, we support SOUTHCOM, and we have sent units to support NORTHCOM on the southwest border. There's nothing that the division doesn't do. There's nothing that inside the Carolina MAGTAF that we don't attend to. Scotty improved our numbers significantly. More promotions, Blue Jackets of the Year, more competition, keen competition, at the quarterly events, we have the retention, we received the retention, Navy's Retention Excellence Award in 2003. In every way, Scotty Cox has impacted this formation. You, through your efforts over three years, I've talked a little bit about why you're here, but what you've done from the orientation through the Chief's Mess into execution in everything that we do, which is always about war fighting, Scotty is, his fingerprints are all over. The Division Combat Academy of Trauma was called out by the Defense Health Agency as the model of excellence for training at the tactical level. The model of excellence for training at the tactical level. The, the Doc Kent Award, okay, the Doc Kent Competition, the Doc Percy Award winner, 2021-2022, all emanating from the division, all reflective of your investment in time and attention. Then on a personal level, Scott, I'll just tell you, when you look to a senior enlisted advisor, you want a couple things, okay? First, you want them to walk the walk. But when it comes to talking the talk, and then walking into the office, at those times and saying, hey boss, you got, you got a couple seconds? And I always knew what that meant. <laughs> it meant that I probably didn't get it right or was thinking about doing something crazy. And Scotty was about to set me right. He was about to come in and say, hey, hey boss, um, you know, nice thought, got it, I heard you, but have you thought about it? I think you might have missed this. Well, why didn't you stop doing something that we were doing before? I just literally probably wasn't paying attention, but I have a directed telescope that can see at the command deck across to the other MSCs inside the MLG, inside the wing, inside the headquarters group, and help me understand, help me see more clearly, and help me focus my thoughts so that can be of service to the division. And when you have 14,000 humans inside the division, it's important. Because like I started, like I said when I started, their families are attached to everything we do impacted by the decisions that we make, impacted by our focus on preparing for combat, the inevitability of going to combat. If you're wearing MARPAT, it's not an if, it's a when we go. Folks like Scotty ensured that I was focused, that I was of service, and that the division, therefore, every Marine and Sailor in the division and their families were better prepared more than when we go to war. I'll be it. And Scotty, I can't thank you enough. I can't thank you enough for being that individual who would walk in and with you and, and Sergeant Major Caldwell, if he was here, he would have been shaking his hand going, oh, hell yeah. <laughs> and Dan Cross is down here right now, and I know that he's seconding the word in general doubt, okay? Thank you for being a speaker of truth. Thank you for being a pro. And I can't say enough. I mean, Veronica's here, Bryn, Sochi, Lucas. I mean, the family's here. I mean, you've got 
some older kids and you've got some younger kids. How the two of you do it, I don't know. <laughs> okay? But you've done it extremely well. Thank you so much. Every metric, every measurable for naval excellence inside a division, <coughs> paired with, bonded with, partnered with your Marine Corps brothers and sisters, we're better. Exponentially better than we were. And in an organization like this, that's all you're tasked to do. That is the why behind the Master Chief Program. Okay, the Command Master Chief Program. Influence, impact, leave the formation better. Exponentially better than when you joined it. Thank you. All right? Please, round of applause for Scott. much longer, but I'd be remiss, okay, because I had the opportunity at the end of calendar year 2023 and into the, uh, the early months of 2024, I was faced with the opportunity, faced with the opportunity to select the next command natural chief for the follow me division. And again, that binder, those binders and the offerings of talent from the service from the Naval Service, you know, was brought to me, and as I called through the packages, and I looked at the experience within all of those packages, one of them stuck out and rose to the top immediately. When you take a look at April Merriman biography, again, what you'll see in her biography, she is simply a professional, and has been a professional. No one's perfect, but Vince Lombardi said that by pursuing perfection, which he demanded, you'll never get there, but you will find excellence. And her record was dem demonstrative of somebody who is pursuing perfection in all things. She has served with the Force Service Support Group, now known as Marine Logistics Groups. Okay, and I don't want to date you, okay? <laughs> but, but, what that tells you is that from the onset, she has served with the Force Service Support Group. She served with the 9th Communications Battalion. She has served at the MEF Headquarters Group. And she's been the Senior Enlisted Advisor and Lead Planner at the Headquarters level for the Medical Officer for the 1st Marine Expeditionary Force. She's been selected and chosen. And she's been a Lead Petty Officer in formations. And that is not something that just happens. You don't just show up and you're not just selected. It happens because you're the best. It happens because you are the sailor of choice. And that choice is very intentional every time. And when I looked at the arc of excellence throughout your career, it was very, very clear that in order to not step backwards, not lose any momentum in a division that is moving fast, going forward, and will be asked to do more with less, that's just the nature of the Marine Corps. We'll never have enough. We're always going to be asked to make more with less. You need leaders on the command deck that can help you through that decision. She has experience with our amphibious ship. She served aboard OPD, the USS Anchorage. She has time on the ground inside the MAGTAP. She has wing experience on the Navy side. She brings the depth and breadth of experiences that will help the division prepare for its combat mission. And it's a combat mission. That's the main thing. That is the focus. You're prepared for this. You've been purpose built for it. We were talking a little bit earlier. And as you take on these huge responsibilities, there's always that bit of trepidation. Kick off butterflies. It means that it's important. It means that your give a crap factor is way, way high. You should be nervous. 14,000 humans, Marine sailors, most of whom you'll never see at the same time because they're always distributed all over the globe. But you're purpose built and ready for this. Your mother, your brother should be very, very proud of what you've accomplished. And I'm excited for the command deck here in 2nd Marine Division. And what we are able to do because of our naval service and the way we operate 
is plug and play the talent. General Odom, General Lively, Sergeant Major Mendez, and now Command Master Chief Merriman. Boy, I'm excited about the lineup. That's if you if you have a fantasy, if you're in a fantasy football, all right, a fantasy division, it's not a fantasy. These are the leaders you need in order to get the work done. You've been purpose built, you're prepared, you are ready, and I am thankful that I had the opportunity to review your package, and I'm absolutely pleased and excited about watching you have an impact on the Follow Me Division over the next three years. You're the right person at the right time. All of your credentials, you've, you've learned everything you need to learn to get here, and now you'll simply learn more with your brothers and your sisters here in the Carolina MACTAF and at Fleet Headquarters. I know we have representation from the force and from the fleet here in the room. Keep learning. Keep doing what you've been doing. You've got a great team to operate with. Congratulations, Steve. Please, a round of applause. Always happens when you have a roof over your head and you're not looking at it in the sun. Okay? But I wanted to lay this out because it's, Scotty's probably not going to brag on himself and Command Chief Merriman is not going to brag on herself as well. So I brag on their behalf. And it's important that their families know why you're in the room. And again, thank you, Scotty Cox. Big day for you. On behalf of the Follow Me. Uh, COs, GOs, General Norman, Ms. Kim, thanks for coming. CSAG, Larry, where we are back there, thank you for setting this up for you to see these. I want them to see this and talk about it. Uh, but I really appreciate everybody coming out and showing your support. Sergeant Majors, when I got here with Dan, Dan's a great guy. You guys all respect him. I was like, are they going to respect me? How am I going to be? I'm a guy from outside the world coming in, and you all treated me with respect, and you got behind me and everything I wanted to do. You brought me in and helped me and made it go, made the ball go down the court. So I really appreciate everything you do. Some of my newest and best friends are sitting over here on this side of the room. There will also be in my ceremony tonight. So my, oh, there's some of them over here too. <laughs> <laughs> so my speech was very short because of today is my retirement day and I'll retire. And as I was turning over the sword this morning to General Lively, thank you for your kind words as well. I went, I was good, rehearsal. I went to go give him the sword, and I was like, it's over. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of went like, I don't know what I said, but I was like, I was supposed to. We did have yeah, We did not the sword. That's because for the past month and a half, two months, I've been preparing for my retirement. This is like, you know, this was on the burner, and April was here, and I knew it was good, and then all of a sudden it's here, and I'm like, I haven't even thought about what am I going to say. Uh, so I don't really know what to say other than, there's two people that got me here to this point in my career. My beautiful wife, Veronica, General Donald. He selected me, as General Work said, and I got here, and then he had this, he's a super smart guy, had this crazy vision, hey, we're going to send Marines forward into places where they've never been before, and we went and briefed the free forces, we went over and briefed the uh, SEAL teams, and I'm sitting there in this brief, and I'm like, it's one of those moments where you're like, sir, I gotta talk to you. Because <laughs> all those places you wanna go and the SEALs are there, all they do is go in and kill you and leave. But all those places you wanna go, CBs are there now, sitting there, doing their jobs. The door's open, we just gotta get in bed. And he was like, where's that master chief? About three weeks later, I'm on a plane, going over to Europe. What am I doing, sir? Go over there, open the door, keep the tables over, tell them the Marines are coming, and we need support. And that's what I did. Two months later, I'm sitting in Six Fleet Headquarters with the General, and the wars kicked off, and we're just, the Marines are doing amazing things, and the CBs are there to support us. We spent a lot of time in Iceland with the CBs, and it was great. He really got to see up close and personal what the CBs can do. So everything that I brag about is CBs. General Work or General Donovan knows exactly what the CBs are so I really appreciate the opportunity, and uh, I'm, I'm really curious to see what you'll say after what General Worth said tonight. <laughs> <laughs> but, but on the same token, I'm curious, to, what's he going to say tonight as well? Um, so, General talked about, you know, the selection, the process of the selection. I had 26 packages I had to go through. 
And it was extremely difficult. Because out of that 26, <coughs> I got down to about six names. And uh, April, you kept coming up to the top. So uh, I ended up handing the list over to you. Went up, came back down. And your name was in there. And I stepped back and it was totally on general work except the last day. About five minutes to the last hour, I just went into his office and I said, Sir, if the balloon goes up tomorrow, April Merriman's ready to take the watch. She knows how to wear the gear. She's been there. She's done it. The other candidate is more of a sheep, ship type person and would have had to struggle just a little bit. I'm like, she'll be ready to go out the door. And that's how I left. I had no idea for a few weeks later who, who he selected or who I knew why because I don't ask that question. So I, I agree you are the right person at the right time. For my kids, hey, thank you for everything. I know I <laughs> I know I yell at the top of my lungs when I'm talking to you. You're like, what are you yelling? I'm like, no, I'm just talking. I appreciate your support over the years. Um, Veronica, I appreciate you, your, your family. We'll talk more about them later tonight. I have an actual script. And everybody that came here. <laughs> Seems in the back of the room. The Navy doesn't do this at all. And they don't do it right. So I asked Larry, I said, hey, if we do a C-SAC here, I think our CDs need to see this ceremony. And we as CDs need to start following them. Following them really. We need to let our sailors know that, hey, Master Chief's leaving and we got a new Master Chief. And that Master Chief's going to make things better. So I encourage all of you to go back to your CEOs, tell them, I'm buying a cutlass, I'm going to get it engraved because you open up this and it says, follow me to vision on it. I encourage you to tell your CEO, I'm doing this and we're going to do this. Because we need to set the example for the rest of the Navy, as we do in a lot of other ways. And the Marines, you guys do it right. You give the recognition where it is, you make our jobs important as senior enlisted leaders, and I think sometimes that's downplayed in the Navy, unfortunately. And the only way we can do it as senior leaders is Go make it happen and make those CEOs stand up there and acknowledge in front of the sailors what's going on. Who's really doing all the hard work? So please go back and think about that and do it. Uh, I think that's it for now. I'll get more later. <laughs> April, it's your turn. You ready? Uh, first and foremost, generals, thank you for being here. ADC, staff, I look forward to being a part of the Follow Me Division. Sergeant Major Mendez, I'm ready to kick indoors with you. <laughs> um, I'm coming from the fleet, a couple uh, naval tours with a helicopter squadron and a ship, but I will say it's good to be home. It is good to be home with the FMF. My mother, my brother, all I can say is thank you for being here. 26 years of service, this is the first thing my mother and brother have been able to attend. And uh, I'm, I'm very... <laughs> Words cannot express the support and the gratitude that I have. My mom constantly tells me, when are you coming home? When are you coming home? <laughs> um, and I'm like, I can't come home, Mom. I'm sorry. Um, she knows, she understands, both of them were in the prior army, so they understand the military life, and I just want to say thank you for letting me do what I truly, absolutely love to do. Seabees. <laughs> this wasn't part of, my, part of my plan, but I will tell you, my grandfather was a prior CB. Should, should he have been with us today? I guarantee you, he'd probably be jumping all over you, trying to uh, talk to you and ask you a bunch of questions. Uh, growing up, my grandfather absolutely loved the Navy, and all he ever talked about was being a student. So I thank you also for being here, even though I know you're here primarily for Scotty, but I just wanted to, uh, to give you that because it's through my grandfather that I learned the work ethic that I have today, and it's because of the time that he spent with you. <coughs> The Marines, I will say that I truly believe that leadership is leadership. No matter what my name tape says, I am here to also advocate for you on your behalf, along with Sergeant Andrew. So I just want to put that plug out there that it may say Navy on my name tag, but I am here for you. To the Chiefs and the Sailors of the 2nd Marine Division, I've just got two simple goals. First is to continue the legacy of the Follow Me Division. There's an illustrious history there, and I am proud and am very excited to be a part of the Carolina MAGTAP and to be a part of this division. 
like Major General Worth said, my, my background with the FMF is extensive. 20 years. There was a time as a young HM2, if you would have told me to go to a ship, I would have told you to F off. <laughs> um, I have truly loved being a part of the FMF. And speaking of Major General Worth, I do have to say thank you. Um, it's kind of bittersweet. Um, to be interviewed by you, to be selected by you, but not to be able to work for you is bittersweet. <laughs> but, but you're not going far, he's only going down one level in the building. Um, so I'll get to still work for him indirectly. Uh, but I am excited to work with Major General Odom. Major General Odom was then Colonel Odom when I was a senior chief in, at 3 Meth in Okinawa. So me and General Odom actually know each other quite well. He actually called me this morning to give me uh, his warm wishes as well. But to the chiefs and sailors of the 2nd Marine Division, again, my next goal is very simple, is to make sure that you are trained, ready, and prepared for the next fight. Because we are a war fighting organization and we have to continually remind ourselves that each and every day. If you listen to our senior military leaders, they will tell you January 1st, 2027. They constantly tout 2027 as the time that we need to be ready and prepared in case, Pres in case President Z takes the PRC, the Chinese, to invade Taiwan. He's put the plan out there for years. He has made it well known. And my vision for you is to make sure that you are trained, ready, and prepared to fight should it happen tonight. I want the sailors to remember one number. 99%. 99% is the survival rate that we have on the battlefields of Iraq and Afghanistan as part of Navy medicine. Our Navy, our Marine Corps, and most importantly, our nation now knows what you are capable of. They've seen it. Your predecessors have set the bar. That standard is there now. Our nation expects you to continue to live up to that expectation to bring their sons and daughters home. So my vision is to make sure that you are trained, ready, and prepared physically, mentally, spiritually to make sure you do so. So I am very excited, very honored, humbled to be a part of the Carolina MAGTAF and most importantly, the Follow Me Division. Thank you so much. Wow.